everybody welcome back to my channel my name's Rachel and this is Stitched Up so today a little bit later than I planned is my March Makes vlog now I haven't done one of these for ages because I think back in January and February well February was a bit of a write-off anyway because we ended up being flooded but um yeah I think I had planned to do them and time just got away with me and it just never happened but I'm here today albeit we're nearly halfway through April when I thought I would show you my makes for March. Any of you that watched my March plans vlog will have realised that March was going to be the month of shirts now it didn't happen and I should know this by now that whenever I plan anything it never ends up happening because I think I just I don't know, I, there was lots of reasons why some of the projects that I planned for March just didn't happen. I think one of them was because we're in the middle of refurbing our kitchen at the minute and then with the dreaded coronavirus that we're having at the minute, it the kitchen is taking much longer than we originally planned and it just meant that my normal cutting out space, which I tend to use my dining room table, I couldn't get to because half of the contents of the kitchen were on the dining room table, which meant that I needed to cut out on the floor and some of the projects that I had planned for March um, were quite, would have been really awkward to do on the floor because I needed a hard surface to be able to um, alter the patterns and all that kind of thing so it just ended up where I had to rethink my plans totally um, what's really been missing out of my wardrobe was tops um, mainly so you know tops for cooler days but not really cold days obviously jumpers and things I tend to wear when it's really cold but March was still quite a cool month for us in the UK and um, it was the long sleeve tops really that I could wear either with jeans at home or wear them for work as well with smarter trousers so that was the plan so the first thing that uh, well I did actually make up one item that I said I would make in um, March and we'll come to that in a minute but the first thing I wanted to show you is actually what I'm wearing so this is the Chasuti Patterns Hillary top now I will insert some better pictures of me wearing it so you can have a better look but I've wanted to make this pattern for ages I bought it last year and I really like to suit his patterns. I think they're really modern. The fit is really good. The instructions are really straightforward, easy to follow, lots of pictures to guide you. And um, yeah, I, I, I really love them. I do find that they tend to be a little bit um, on the large size for the sizing. And I tend to always size down with their patterns and that tends to work well for me. So the Hillary top is a bit like a sort of billowy, um peasant style blouse i guess and it's got a lovely pleated peplum at the bottom um nice billowy sleeves with elastic around the cuffs and you also have an elasticated shoulder as well it has a facing front and back and then it's a, a bit of a raglan sleeve as well um the it was very very simple to make up the instructions are really easy to follow what i would say is that this is quite fabric hungry and the main reason for that is obviously because the sleeves are billowy and the peplum is quite large as well and i'm five foot ten and i needed just under two meters of fabric to make this top so you know that's quite a lot of fabric isn't it but i um made it up in this gorgeous black double gauze that i got from higgs and higgs and um, it's lovely it's really lovely it's with it being in a natural fiber it's nice and cool but also keeps you warm as well on those cooler days but we're just getting into sort of quite nice weather here in the uk now so it's probably gonna have a little bit of a back seat for a while but um really pleased that i've made this up as i say having it in my stash for ages it was a pattern that i've wanted to make up for quite some time and um, i'm really happy with it i made a size medium no sorry i started with a size small around the neckline and shoulders and i graded out to a medium under my under the arms and it's worked really well it's nice and loose but not too oversized and um i think i don't think i added any, no I did I added an inch to the bodice section so that the peplum would hit me in the right place and I'm really pleased with those adjustments that I needed to make I think it's worked really well so I'll definitely make this again um, I could see it in a viscose I wouldn't want to make it out of cotton because I think the peplum would stick out too far um, I was a little bit worried that this style wouldn't suit me um, obviously I'm quite 
large around my hips and my waist is my smallest part and peplum tops tend to just accentuate my hips but I think I can get away with it and um, yeah really really like it so moving on to the next top um this is a top that i did say that i was going to make in my plans video it's the vanessa pousse wanted top and um yeah again this is a pattern that has been out there in the sewing community for quite some time now hasn't it i think she released it probably about two or three years ago now and um, so there's loads and loads and loads of um people that have made this up already and yeah it's definitely been on my radar so i bought the pattern finally last month and decided to have a go at it. Now the pattern is in French and there isn't an English translation so I did need to use Google Translate because my French is a little bit rusty um, and it worked generally okay but obviously you know the construction of sentences in other languages doesn't directly translate into English a lot of the time so and when you're trying to follow precise instructions for um, something that you've not done before that it can be a little bit confusing but I think I got there um, let me just grab it and I'll show you so this is the top that I made um, I made it in just a red cotton jersey that I've had in my stash and I did three quarter length sleeves and obviously it's just a, a jersey top but the cute thing about this is the square neckline with these um, angled neckband on it now it's as I say, the, the construction of the top itself is really straightforward. If you've made jersey tops before, there is nothing new. Um, but the, the, the unique thing about this is that neckband. And I would say you have to be very, very, very precise, especially if you are using a plain fabric like this. Now, I did end up with a couple of little puckers, just, I can think you can just see one there. And also at that side as well. Now, fortunately, when it's on, they do pull out so you can't really tell um but it's it's yeah the instructions are there but as i say it's the french to english instructions and they do have she does give you a couple of pictures to demonstrate what she's doing but to be honest i didn't find them that helpful so i sort of figured it out myself i guess really and um yeah I'm, I'm pleased with it i'm really pleased with it but i do think i will need to practice a little bit more with the, the that neckband to make sure it fits um you know and it attaches well without any puckers if i turn the top inside out you can see how it looks on the inside i sewed the majority of this on my overlocker it was just obviously attaching the neckband you need that precision so i would recommend that you at least baste it with your sewing machine first but inside out that's how it looks on the inside so it's fairly neat and I'm pleased with how it's turned out. I really love this on. I think it's it's really flattering and um, yeah, it's definitely not gonna be the only one I make. I do want to make a stripe one and I think I'd said in my plans video for March that I was going to make a stripe one, but I need the, the bit of fabric that I had left. I, I, I know that I've got another piece of it somewhere and I can't find it at the minute. So that's gonna have to be put on hold until I find that other fabric but I definitely want to make a stripe version so that's my second top that I made um I've already worn it loads it looks great with jeans looks great with work trousers so yeah definite winner right so next up is another couple of tops that I made in March and ages ago I made the sew over it cowl neck dress as a top and I found that it was too big um, I made the size 12 but found that it constantly slipped back towards my shoulders where you could see my bra strap and the cowl was really low so I think I needed to go down a size on that but what I also found with that is it wasn't really suitable for work because with the cowl being so low it meant that when I'm examining patients um you know it, it tends to show a little bit too much of things that I don't want to show so I had a look online to see if there was a tutorial to be able to adapt a any jersey pattern to create a cowl neck um, because there's always loads of resources online aren't there so I found a really good one and I created a vlog which I will link to down below where you can go and have a look about how I did this but I used I started with the Agnes by Tilly and the Buttons that pattern is great as a basic jersey top I would highly recommend it it's really good 
fit is really good and you know it's a good basis for so many different hacks and I decided that I would follow that tutorial to hack the front of it to make it a cowl neck and I'm really pleased with how it turned out um, mainly because it meant that it doesn't slip off my shoulders and the cowl is not too deep that it shows off your cleavage which I didn't want so I loved it so much that I made two and it, I certainly won't stop there. So the first one I made is this one here. So this started off as an Agnes and I, as I've said, I hacked the front into this lovely cowl neck that has a little bit of a two inch facing on the inside. The back is just the neckband that comes with the Agnes that I just attached to the back. And this is just the long sleeve version. So this fabric was a viscose jersey that I got from the textile centre probably about three years ago now. I will um, put some pictures in of me wearing this top so you can see it in a little bit more detail. But I'm really pleased with how this came out. It fits really lovely. The drape isn't too low. Um, but it's just smart enough that I can wear it for work. So um, yeah, so I loved doing this so much. It was really quick as well. Um, but I uh, quickly whipped up another one. And this one is made from fabric that I bought with the intention of making a cowl neck top. So this is it here. This is um, some fabric that I got from the Gold Heart Road when I went at the end of January. Again, I made the long sleeve version, but this this, path, this fabric doesn't have as much stretch as the other. So although the sleeves are long, when it's actually on, it's more three quarter length sleeves. You can just see a Martin hoovering up downstairs. Um, he doesn't normally he doesn't normally do the housework for me, but he is um, he's been doing some sanding in the kitchen, and uh, I think he's cleaning up all the dust. Anyway, back to the makes. Yeah, so this is a really lovely. It's got like a bit of a slub weave to it. Really pretty, really pretty fabric. And uh, yeah, again, I think once when I when I'd made the other one, I think this sewed up in probably about forty five minutes. It was really quick. So if you're interested in looking at how I did it um, as I say I will link the vlog down below so you can go and have a look but yeah really really happy with that I'd like to make a sleeveless one I think that would be nice for summer so um, yeah I have to have a think about that one right so moving on I um, wanted to make some trousers there's two tra two patterns that I really love wearing um, in summer and they are the sew over ultimate trousers and also the um, wide leg pants by In The Folds for Peppermint magazine. So they're both totally different. Obviously the ultimate trousers are um, slim legged cropped um, trousers with with a bit of stretch in and the wide leg pants are obviously wide legged culottes but I do love both of them and this month I bought myself some of the Cobra Corsage cotton drill fabric from Sherwoods and decided as soon as it came I knew that I wanted to make the sew over it ultimate trousers out of them so let me just grab them and I'll show you how they ended up. So these are the trousers here now I have made the ultimate trousers quite a few times now and I really love them and I they just have they don't have a waistband they just have a, a facing they've got a side invisible zip which is just there and they are designed to sort of be ankle length um now this fabric as i say is a cotton drill that has a little bit of spandex in so it does have a little bit of give i made the size 14 and to be honest they're a little bit big now when i first put these on they fit absolutely fine but over the course of the day the fabric does bag out a little bit so they end up a little bit too loose so um i will go down a size for my next pair um, but I really love them. I made them ankle length. Again, I will insert some pictures of me wearing them. I lined the facing just with some rainbow bias binding. And the other thing I did was I stitched down the facing because the only problem I find with these trousers is that the facing tends to flip out, even if you snip into it and um, understitch it as well. So I, um, I what I tend to do is through the darts, that are at the front and the back I just stitch in the ditch all the way through into the facing so that it, it keeps it nice and um, hidden basically so but I'm really pleased with them I love them I've worn them with this top this top goes with them really really well and um, I'll get loads of wear out of them I'm sure so uh, I did make another pair up in my live stream last week 
and I went down to a size 12 and they fit much better. So um, yeah, I'm going to make another pair probably this month out of the Lady McElroy Savannah print because I've bought that from Sherwoods as well and with the intention of making another pair of these. But yeah, these are great because they, you can, you know, you can wear them casually. You can, I, I've worn them for work as well. So I'll just get loads and loads of wear out of them. So uh, yeah, really happy with those. And then I made another pair of trousers um i have had the true bias hudson pants pattern now for about three years and never made them up and again it was a pattern that just flew through the sewing community a few years ago and i bought it and it's just sat in my stash well at the moment like many of you out there we're all sort of confined to our houses aren't we because of the current situation that's going on out there and you know i don't always want to get dressed up when i'm at home sometimes i just want to be wearing comfies so i decided it was the perfect time to have a go at making up the hudsons now what worried me about the hudsons was that they are designed as a slim leg and i don't have slim legs at all they are not the slimmest part of me they never have been i'm pear shaped i tend to be more weighty around my bottom half so i was worried whether these trousers would fit me or look right um i mean again they're only designed for obviously casual wear aren't they and um relaxing around the home but um i had this idea in my head of making them a bit sort of retro style and there is a online store called little t's haberdashery they sell amazing elastics trims loads of different notions and um, you really need to check them out they are temporarily closed at the minute because of the coronavirus but they're, they're great i can't recommend them enough i get a lot of my variegated overlocker cones from there and uh, yeah I, before she closed i did manage to get some um, rainbow elastic trim that she has in stock and it's beautiful and as soon as i saw that i thought yes uh, that's what i'm gonna use for my hudson pants so let me grab them and i'll show you them so these are them here now i made them in a navy french terry that i bought from Louboudou fabrics and um I used the trim from Little T's Haberdashery just to trim all down the outer seam right down to the ankle. I added the cuff onto these at the bottom and obviously they have side front pockets as well. Nice big waistband. Now you are supposed to, in the pattern, create two little buttonholes. I don't know if you can see those there to add a drawstring. I did create the buttonholes, but I haven't added the drawstring. Um, again, I've used my rainbow overlocker thread inside and um, I love them, absolutely love them. They're really retro. Now these I made uh, between a size 10 and 16 and they are a little bit big to be honest the waist is is far too big um and they were just a little bit loose again over the course of the day they tend to bag out a little bit so i have altered the pattern i've made another pair actually in april but the cropped length and i've altered the pattern i've gone down a little bit of a size um to to sort of just bring them in just a little bit more because they just tend to get a little bit too loose as the day goes on but i'm really pleased with them actually they're really a really quick make um quicker than i thought they would be and um i just love this styling they're so they're so retro and uh, this trim was really easy to apply i just basically when i had stitched the front leg to the back leg at the outer side seam before i stitched the inner leg seam i just put the elastic on that seam all the way from the top down to the ankle and i just stitched both sides with a narrow zigzag stitch so it looks fairly invisible i don't think you'll be able to see that stitching um so yeah perfect they're great for you know obviously I'm, I, I wouldn't wear these out i'm not you know i'm not streetwise and yeah i would not wear these for um going out in but they're fine for around the house which is exactly what i wanted so yeah so that's my next make and the last thing that i made in march was the friday pattern company vanatsa two-piece swimsuit so let me just grab that right so the friday pattern company vanatsa swimsuit is a two-piece bikini um it's got a bit of a retro vibe to it as well and really good if you just want a little bit more coverage and i've made this twice already for my daughter when she went on holiday last year and w the plan was that i was going to make myself one for when we go on holiday later this year if we're allowed out by then um so i bought some gorgeous leopard print 
um, lycra from Walton's before they shut and um, decided that I would make this up. Now I have done a sew along to this. I've split it into two parts, the bikini top and the bottoms. And the bikini top, bikini top is already up on my channel. I'll link to that down below if you want to go and have a look. Um, the bottoms I have filmed it and unfortunately when I've edited, edited the vlog and tried to upload it, it would only upload a portion of the vlog and I couldn't understand why. And when I've looked at it again, some of the clips for whatever reason have corrupted and I've deleted them from my camera, which is really frustrating. So it means that I'm going to have to make the bottoms again so that I can finish off that series. So please bear with me if you're waiting for the bottoms. Um, what I will say is the bottoms are very easy. If you've done the first bit, the bottoms are easy and very straightforward. But I am going to make another one um, to take me with me on holiday anyway. So I will re re I will redo the sew along for the bikini bottoms and upload it. I'm hoping to do that this weekend. But I thought you'd like to see the finished bikini. So um, this is it here. So this is the bikini top. And as I say, I used this gorgeous leopard print lycra that I got from Walton's. And I lined it with just their plain nude um, lycra as well. Now you can use power mesh. Um, you can interline with power mesh as well if you want to but i didn't and the main reason for that is because power mesh is really expensive and um even you know this works really well if you just line it with plain lycra it's just as good just as supportive so um yeah now with the pa with this pattern you do have the option of adding in foam cup cups if you want to um, I didn't need to, to be honest, and um, it's got this little tie front with a little keyhole detail. I don't know if you can just see that there. If I just move that tie out of the way, it's got a little keyhole detail before you've got the band that fits around your rib cage. Um, it's just a plain back, as you can see, and um, yeah, it's really lovely. It's very true to size, I would say. Now this one, I made the same size that I made my daughter and it's a little bit big for me. It will be fine for, you know, lazing about in the sun, but I certainly wouldn't be able to swim in it because I think it would fly off. Um, I think it would come off and that's the last thing you'd want. So I will go down a size um, for my next one. Um, the bottoms are here. So again, these are high-waisted bottoms with really good coverage, nice, waistband which I have top stitched down you can use a cover stitch if you've got one I have but I couldn't get to it when I was making these because of the mess in our kitchen so um so yeah so I just used a twin needle and top stitched um again these are lined just with plain lycra and that's the back so uh so yeah bikini um don't know when I'm going to get to try it out but um yeah it's um honestly go and have a look at that vlog that i've done because making your own bikini and sewing with lycra really isn't that scary as long as you use the right needles um and the right settings on your sewing machine it's actually really straightforward right so that is everything that i made in march so considering we were flooded for the first week of march still and trying to get our house straightened back round and then you know we've been um having this coronavirus situation going on i haven't done bad have i really so april wise i'm not sure what my plans are i've already made a few things in april in the first week which i've been quite productive this week um but for the rest of april um, i haven't really got any firm plans and i think the reason for that is because the weather is just a little bit changing at the minute i'm thinking of spring and summer but because of the current situation where we are locked down and we can't really get out i'm sort of hesitant to um, really make you know have firm plans of what I'm going to make because I don't know none of us know what's going to be happening over the next few weeks and months do we so I'm sort of just playing it by ear at the minute and yeah so I've not really got any firm plans I still would like to make the shirts that um, I'd planned and the shirt dresses that I'd planned in March I think I had planned there was a McCall's pattern and also the grain line archer. Um, I might put the grain line archer on hold because it's getting quite warm now. So I don't know if I'll make that, but I definitely want some shirt dresses for summer. So yeah, that's probably going to be, I'm probably going to be thinking about that for April. Definitely want to make the 
ultimate trousers in the savannah print and i do want to make another pair of the wide leg pants by in the folds as well because that really is my go-to pattern for culottes i love it so they're definitely going to happen in april but i need to choose some fabric for those right that's it from me today i hope you've enjoyed this video and i hope you've enjoyed looking at what i made for march take care of yourselves and i will see you all again really soon bye